Hello world! Today we're going to take another look at how to play Roaring Moon EX in early 2024. Today we're going to do it by watching some live play videos. So I've got three different matches that I played with the deck and I'm going to go through and show you how they went, what you kind of need to be doing with this deck in order to have success. And uh, hopefully you get something out of this video, maybe got something out of the last video I did, or maybe you'll get something out of tomorrow's video, which is going to be isolated clips from this video where I go in and give specific gameplay advice about how to handle a few key decisions along the way that really make a world of difference as to how well you're going to do with Roaring Moon. So if anything helps you, it helps me a lot for you to like, subscribe, and comment on the video. Anything you can do to support me, I appreciate. But either way, regardless, we're going to go ahead and jump straight into the live play now. Okay, so we're starting off here. Our, our opponent won the coin flip. Well, has the coin flip. They're going to flip. Uh, they chose heads, it came tails, so we get to pick. We always want to go second. We can hit hard so often that it's it, never do we want to go first. So our opponent's going to go first, and we get a mulligan, so do they. That's fine. We end up starting, <laughs> oh my gosh, we're going to start Luminion. Uh, yeah, that's not what you want to see, but at least we have some, some Pokemon search cards. Our opponent is starting Iron Hands um, to threaten a three-price turn on our Luminion. All right, let's see what we can do. We get a Roaring Moon as our top deck and a Battle VIP, so we'll want to get Radiant Greninja and Squawkabilly to start setting things up, I think. We have that Nest Ball in hand as well, so we can go ahead. We can get more Peko. Um, since we want to go for it, we want to try to get a knockout right now. So we're going to go get more Peko to help with moving Pokemon around if, if it works out. Uh, discarding one Earthen Vessel to get two more. We get another Battle VIP Pass. We'll go ahead and grab a Darkrai, uh, just in case we need to use his V-Star capability later. Um, go ahead, attach the Dark Patch there. We're going to discard an energy, get a couple more, attach one of these to Roaring Moon, because we really want to make this work. It doesn't matter if we hit Iron Hands for 70. That doesn't help us. Um, okay, so we did not get anything that's going to help us out. We're going to have to Iono and hope we get a Dark Patch and a Switch card. <laughs> Only Dark Patch. All right, so uh, yeah, this is game. And this is part of the power of the Roaring Moon deck. You can hit 230. You can hit infinite damage on turn one going second. So uh, just like that, we win against the Maridon before they ever even get to play their second card. Now, sure, plenty of time They'll, they'll get Maridon out, turn one, and they'll be able to go ahead and blaze through, get set up. We still will often outspeed them to the first knockout, and from there it's going to be hard for them to recover. But the thing about us going second, not only does it help us to often get that kind of situation going, but it also kind of leaves our opponent in trouble because they have to come back and do their turn one without a supporter. So they don't get set up as well as they normally maybe would before we're already pouncing on them and taking things out. Okay, time for our second game. Uh, this time we're getting the coin flip. We're going to go ahead, choose heads, and see how it comes down. Ooh, we got tails. So our opponent's going to get to choose who goes first and second. Um, hopefully they decide they want to go first because that's always what we want to see. And they do. Thank you, opponent, for choosing your, uh, your doom. Okay, so we get nothing, get a mulligan, and our opponent does not, so we're going to give them an extra card. Go ahead, hit that done, we're going to give them a few extra cards. We do have more Peko to start off with, and that's certainly helpful. Uh, might be a mistake just starting them more Peko and not putting a second Pokemon out, but it looks like it's not going to matter, because they are not going to take us out with Frigibaxes. Okay, so here... We want to take a knockout turn one if we can. We'd prefer it to not be on a single prizer if they bench something else. If we're going to attack a single prizer, we want to hit into the Frigibax uh, with more Peko. But our ideal play is going to be to take down Chen Pao. Hopefully doing it just as fast as we did with that Iron Hands EX last game. Now, our start doesn't look great. But we do have a Pokestop and we do have a Radiant Greninja. We'll go ahead, bench the Radiant Greninja. Um, we could probably bench the Darkrai too, it doesn't matter. Uh, but we are going to conceal cards and get that Dark Energy into the discard. There's another energy for us. We have Sada's Vitality 
in hand as well. And this Nest Ball will get us a Roaring Moon. So we'll go ahead, grab the Roaring Moon. We've only got two in deck right now. And probably want to go ahead and play the Pokestop. Since we have a Vitality in hand, uh, it's not going to hurt us too bad. Anything that gets discarded is going to be okay. And getting a whole bunch of items it is definitely, definitely nice. Okay, so we'll go ahead and play the Sun's Vitality so that we can get an energy. And now we have Dark Patches. Let's see what we can get with Trek and Shoes. An Earthen Vessel is perfect. That'll let us get a card into the, get another energy into the discard, as well as one to attach for turn. And we'll have one that we can conceal away next turn as well. So this is, this is great for us. And we'll just go ahead, use that Dark Patch, get a manual attachment in, and we're off. So we're going to go ahead and take our first knockout, take the first two prizes in this match. Uh, with Calamity Storm here, that means we're going to discard the stadium, but that's okay. So now we get two prizes off of that, and we are ahead in the prize trade. And even if they get a knockout, worst case scenario, if we have no other way of getting a Pokemon out, we can use those two cross sievers. Chances are very good that they're going to have to use an Irida. There we go. To uh, get their setup established here, which means that we won't have to worry about them disrupting our hand right now. And that is great. We have two Dark Patches and a Dark Energy in hand, so we're guaranteed to be able to attack again with this same Roaring Moon by using the Cross Seavers if we can't make more happen. Now, this is going to be a spot where I'm less likely to use that Radiant Greninja um, to discard the Energy and draw more unless we get a card that helps us see more. Our opponent's continuing their setup. Their board is great, but it doesn't matter when we're going to be able to guarantee that we're ahead in the prize trade. You know, even if we have to attack with Frenzy Gouging and only have 30 HP left, that's not that big a deal. We'll just gust up their Chin Pao later on or take a knockout with a Morpeko against one of their little evolving basics that hasn't evolved. Um, won't be a big deal. But hopefully we'll get another Stadium and it won't even come to that. So Roaring Moon goes down along with his energy. We'll of course promote more Peko with the free retreat. And then we will see what we get here. Okay, an Ultra Ball is great. We can get lots of different things now. And uh, it opens up our options. So using Radiant Greninja wasn't as, as bad now because we can always get extra items back now that we have the Ultra Ball. Earthen Vessel is great. Gets us the energies in hand again. We'll go ahead and play that. Probably discard just like a battle VIP pass. And here come the energies. So now we can use the Ultra Ball to get Darkrai V Star. And we can use Cross Seavers to get. The Roaring Moon back, and then we can use Darker V Star to get Asada back. We're not going to need Lost Vacuum. Um, I think we can probably just discard an Energy here. That feels that feels safe with all those Dark Patches. That can work out well. So, double checking my logic, but I'm pretty sure that this is going to work out just fine. So we use the cross sievers, play two of them, grab Roaring Moon back, and then we can grab Vitality back as well. There's another set of cross, so we get one cross sever back, and then let's see what else we've got in here. A nest spot, ooh. Okay, so we get the Nest Ball, we can get another Roaring Moon out before we play the Asada, and we'll get double attachment that way. And then we have tons of Dark Patches. This Okay, we're, we're from Scolden. All right, from here, we're going to get... We're basically going to have both of these guys set up. So one energy onto each of them. 
We can dark patch on each of them. <laughs> we even hit the stadium. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So dark patch on each of them. There we go. And onto the next one. Then we'll manually attach onto one. And we can pokey stop. Just to see what else we can get into our hand. That also lets us then have a stadium to knock out Jim Pally more easily. Get a cross switcher as well. So that's going to be helpful going into next turn. Um, yeah, alright, so we Calamity Storm, and we're at two prizes left. With two full health Roaring Moons ready and raring to go. Wonder what we get off the prizes. <laughs> Another Dark Patch. Okay, so... I mean, our our opponent's only play is going to be to make like a, an Iano play, and if they do that, they're probably not setting up a Chen Pao to get a knockout. And even if they do, as long as we can get to one energy or energy recovery card, like it doesn't matter if they get this knockout. We can still just get another knockout our next turn. They're looking through. I mean... I would think that this would be something they can pretty easily accomplish. They're going to be able to draw potentially up to 10 cards with the barrel, since they have two of them now. Um, yeah, superior energy, get all the energy in the world. We don't care, because we win anyway. Like I said, the only worry is if they get to an Iano. And even then, the chances of us not being able to get to an energy one way or another... Oh, they're playing Irda. We're a lock. There is nothing that can happen now for them to win. They recognize that. They, they look at it and they say, okay, well, our opponent's got to be able to get to an energy now. Oh, their hand. And they're right. So, uh, Chin Pao. Often easier than, you know, the main decks that are, the big decks that are playing right now. But, I mean, it's, uh, it's still an easy matchup. Most of the time. Okay, and now it's time for our third game. And uh, once again, our opponent is going to flip the coin. What do they pick? They end up flipping tails, which is what they chose. So they get to pick, and do they go first or second? They choose first again. Wonderful. And we love it when our opponents choose to go first. Even if it's best for their deck, it's also very much best for our deck. Alrighty. So we have a Roaring Moon... We have double Roaring Moon. We could have gone ahead and benched both, but it's fine to not. This is a very poor start. Hopefully we can top deck something, because this is not doing it for us. They're, on the other hand, getting set up quite nicely. They have a treat. They're going to promote the Mew, get an item, and then they'll draw some cards with Rotom V in their turn, uh, ready and raring to go into the next turn. All right, can we get a top deck? Oh, Pokey Stop. Uh, let's see if it saves us. There's so many items that are good for us, it probably will. Or see, uh, discard the Minion, but we get an Ultra Ball and a Battle VIP Pass. That is perfect. We have a switch card too, so we can get more Peko to be able to swap to the bench and get all of our energy that way. And of course Greninja will help us with getting energy into the discard. We do have Darkrai V-Star in deck. We have three copies of Sada. Didn't prize any energy. Okay. I think this is what we're going to want to do. We've already got two Roaring Moons out. And then we'll get a Squawk Ability as well. Go ahead. Play the Ultra Ball. As long as we don't discard the Switch card, I think the rest doesn't matter. Because we are going to Squawk away everything. Uh, but we do want to get that more Peko into the active. So that his free retreat can do us well. We'll go ahead, get him up there, and then we will squawk away our hand. Uh, I'll leave the stadium in play, though. We might make use of it later on. 
All right. <laughs> well, we have a lot of trekking shoes. So let's go ahead and conceal cards, and then we'll see what the trekking shoes can lead us to. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, we'll just start peeling some shoes. Cross switcher. We already have two in hand. I think we can probably do better. Okay, dark energy. Uh, I dig. We have two of these guys down. Let's go ahead and get that one in the discard and another dark energy. Now if we can get rid of it. Paddle VIP. I think getting a dark eye down is important. So let's do that. What do we get off the last tracking shoe? Ultra Ball. Ooh, I think we'll see. We'll run the gamble. Uh, Ultra Ball is tempting because we'd be able to get the dark eye for next turn, like the V-Star for next turn. But if we had hit really we would have liked to have gotten a dark patch there um, looks like we're gonna just have to settle on attaching one and who um i don't think we can do anything we, we've got to take a turn off we're missing the attack uh, if we got a dark patch we could have used some cross switcher shenanigans to attack with more peko we didn't get that this is now thankfully there is no possible way that a Charizard can knock out a Roaring Moon before we've taken a knockout. They don't really even have a way to knock us out after one knockout because they'll be doing 210 damage and uh, we have 230 HP. So that should be fairly good for us. Our opponent is getting Manaphy. All right. Evolving manually to Charmeleon, that's not going to do a lot just yet. So we will be able to uh, actually start the prize trade quickly with uh, playing Sato's Vitality and then uh, Cross Switchers to take out the, the Rotom V there. That'll be a way forward for sure. That That's probably going to be our plan for next turn, unless something drastically changes the situation. But with their Arvin there, they're not going to be able to really mess us up, I don't think. Not going to interrupt the hand. Manual attachment onto the Mew. And a collapse state. Oh, well, there goes our target. Uh, but we get to clear off our squawk ability, which is the only thing they could have knocked out with a Charizard. Uh, and now it's on us. <laughs> we get the Dark Patch. Okay, so since we got the Dark Patch, all right, we're going to conceal away an energy. Then we're going to use more Peko. We can free retreat back. We can Dark Patch onto Morpeko, manually attach onto Morpeko, and he'll do the dirty work for us. So I'm going to retreat. Doesn't matter what we're retreating into. We're just doing this so we can Dark Patch onto Morpeko. And then we will attach for turn. There's a small part of me. kind of want to get more energy in the discard to be able to use Sada's Vitality this turn, but not that big a deal. And I do think that our best target here is their Pidgey, so that we can shut off that quick search ability before it really gets going. Uh, we'll hit the Energizer wheel here and attach the energies to Roaring Moon EX, so that now they'll come back and whatever they do, we'll get two prizes next turn, I think. Or the Vessel will get some, some more energies into the hand for us as well. And we should be good here. We're gonna, we're probably gonna be at three prizes, and they'll be at like five or even six if they. Surely they're not gonna just do a no KO damage attack. Uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, so energy is gonna come down onto the Charizard, and one onto the Charmander makes sense. We see that retreat happening with oh Mew's doing searching for an item first. Uh, Rare candy's not gonna help now. Let's see, an Ultra Ball for, are they getting another Charizard going? Luminion, okay. Okay, so with Luminion, they can get Arvin, they can get, okay, so there's Arvin. Um, what are they going to get with Arvin that matters? So, oh, oh. Justified Gloves is going to bump their damage up from 210 to 240. And Countercatcher, 
So they will get a knockout this turn. All right, let's uh, let's see. So we can go ahead. They'll get a knockout here. We can get the return knockout with Sada's Vitality onto the Roaring Moon. And then an attachment. Turn aside if we need to worry about that collapse stadium. Okay, so... Do we want to conceal first, or do we want to play the Earthen Vessel to thin? I could go either way here. Um, often you hear the phrase thinning is winning, but I don't know. Like Part of me wants to have access to raw energy too, but I guess this should be good. Let's see what's left in our deck as well. Okay, so no Pokemon. We have a couple cross Seavers there. Um, but we might have one in our discard. Then. Let's see what we get off the conceal now. Okay, there's another cross Seaver. So we can get Roaring Moon back. And then we can solder onto both of them, right? Yeah. Alrighty. And we can dark patch onto one. And manually attach either one. So we've got basically again we'll have the two attackers ready and raring to go. We are going to have to use the big attack now with uh, Roaring Moon Frenzy Gouging to leave ourselves with only 30 HP. But they only have one follow up attacker. So next turn, they would have to hit us for 30 and get another attacker set up. Hopefully this is going to be, it's going to be too much for them without quick search to be able to get that ready. You see Charmeleon come into the fray. He just needs another energy to attack. Um, if he does that, then yeah, he takes the knockout. We'd only get one prize. But I think we'd be set. Because he wouldn't have any follow-up. Let's see. Okay, so he's going, he's going to take the knockout with the Charizard. Trying to decide if he's attaching energy or not. He chooses not to. That's fine. And then we get an Iono. Okay, so we're going to have to get to an energy of, of some sort. Uh, but we have Darkrai V-Star still. Uh, with that Pidgey, that means... So he'd have to get another energy attached right now for Pidgey to be able to take a knockout. Pidgeot to be able to take a knockout next turn. Unless they play double turbo. Um, so I think I think we're good. Alright. I don't think they're going to be able to knock out this coming Roaring Moon with anything. Let's see. Dark Ride can get back anything from the discard. I don't think we don't have any Pokemon left in our deck. So what do we have here that we want to pursue. We can get Asada's Vitality with the Transceivers. We want to go that route. We can get Dark Patches. Okay. So if they get another knockout, they just win. So the difference between Dark Patch and Asada's Vitality ultimately isn't that much. But we get to see more cards with Asada's Vitality. So I think that's the way we're going to go. Um, go ahead and burn the nest ball. Just verify what's left in our deck. We do have another dark patch. And some more stadiums. Okay, so I think this is fine. We'll get the Sada's Vitality here. Draw some more cards with it. And see where we're at from there. Okay. So we can Super Rod if we need to. I don't know that we'd need to for anything. Uh, maybe just put some energies back. For draw purposes with the Greninja. And we can get Luminion, but does that even help us? And I think we just I think just the energies uh, to, to be able to keep digging with Greninja if we need to. I think that's the way to play it. And we'll go ahead and attach to Darkrai V too, just in case. And maybe he can be an attacker of note 
next turn, if there is next turn. So our our hope here, our key is thinking that they weren't able to stay in the game as fast as they needed to. Um, if, if they can somehow hit thirty, which isn't a huge ask, but I, I still feel like. It depends. It all depends on what Charmanders they have and what energy access they have. All right, we see a level ball, and so that's the Emperor Charmander. He can do forty, but he needs two energy. Um, I don't think it's particularly often that Charizard plays Raikou. I'm sorry, Raihan. Um, so let's see. If they have Raihan, they win. If they don't, then their best bet is going to be trying to stall us out with Pidgeot. Uh, so, okay, they're playing Iono. Right, that loses us the cross switcher we had in hand. And cards in general. So now they're just going to retreat. Okay. If we can get to an energy, we can get some draw there. We can Poke stop. Will give us some draw as well. Now's where I kind of wish we had left the. Uh, okay, one cross lever, one dark patch. That's not really gonna do it. Uh, if they are able to evolve, they would they would take us out. I think our best bet is to go ahead and use fringy gouging. We take our last prizes. Our opponent's gonna take their last prizes too. And what's gonna happen is that we set up for a sudden death game. And the winner here is the first one to take a prize. Uh, there will actually only be one prize card set out for each of us because this is not a tournament match. If this were a tournament, then the winner gets determined by who takes the first prize, but we set up with six prize cards. And it's the first person to have a prize advantage. Okay, so uh, they're going to flip their coin again, and we'll see. I don't know if they want to go first or second here. I don't know if we want to. I, th I think we still want to go second. I think so. All right, so tails. We get to side. I think we still want to go second. Try to get the. That gives us more capability of setting up because we can play supporter, and that should be good for us. Okay, roaring moon and dark cry. We have a dark patch in hand. Uh, so here's what I'm thinking. Dark cry has a two energy attack that can KO Mew if they put out a Mew. So I'm pu putting roaring moon forward for now in case they have a Mew in play and we can just get that attack with Darkrai powered up for a knockout. We'll have to see. It almost, I mean, it wouldn't be good for them because they're not going to get to knockout territory with it. But it would be almost good if they could um, not leave a benched Pokemon or at least not a like low HP one because then we'd have a hard time cross-switching into a target for like more Peko or Dark Rise 2 energy cost. They didn't bring out the Mew, so Dark Rise is his two energy cost is uh, it does 50 damage. So that's not on the table anymore anyway. Okay, so Pokestop, Trekking Shoes. Can kinda go either way. Switch cart looks good. Dragon Shoes, Vitality looks good. Right, we'll go ahead, we'll play Dark Rise. Now I think we can go ahead and play the Pokestop before the Vitality. Um, because, yeah, most of what we might discard is going to be a problem. Alright, so does that, that gives it to us, right? We get more Peko, we switch cart, and then we Sada plus Attach plus Dark Patch onto the Roaring Moon, and then we win. There we go. So it was much closer because we missed our turn one in the first half of this game. Um, it, it, it got closer. We didn't get any kind of knockout there. And then when we did, it threw us into the odd even prizes. And they were able to just like explore. So, uh, but here we get the win in the sudden death game. And um, yeah, this is the power of Roaring Moon with this updated list. So. Yeah, check it out. Uh, this is definitely the way to play it right now in early 2024. 
Once rotation hits, we're going to lose the cross switchers and we'll lose the cross sievers. And we'll have a whole array of new tools and tricks to play with. Uh, so I'll come back and do an updated Roaring Mooney X video then. Uh, but for now, this is kind of the be all end all, I think, of what you want to do for Roaring Moon. With that, this has been Jeffrey, JB146Blake for Hoopa Hideout, and I thank you for listening and watching.